Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Atika Tajda from Department of Geography, Jamia Mulia Islamia. Today, we will discuss about gender issues in disaster management. The learning objectives are to develop an understanding of gender differences and prevailing inequalities, to understand gender issues arising out in a disaster situation, to explore the possible solution and the best practices to address gender issues in disaster management. The idea of gender and relegation of female gender as unproductive. Sex is the biological characteristics of male and female while gender refers to the socially constructed attribute of being male or female. The idea of gender is shaped by ideological, religious, ethnic, economic and cultural factors. Gender role define the behaviors, tasks and responsibilities that a society consider appropriate for each community. Thus, the gender shapes the social and cultural expectation from an individual based on their sex, the right and power available to them, and often determine the opportunity available. For instance, in some of the society, women are attributed with the role of meeting domestic need while men take part in formal cash earning jobs. Whereas in other societies, both men and women can join the workforce and directly contribute to household income without any inhibitions. This is an example of gender differentiated roles in different social and cultural settings. It is a biological fact that women are the primary caregiver of children due to biological attributes. But the social construction of gender in many societies has associated women primarily to the household and men with economically productive activities. Predominantly, men have been associated with the productive and public interaction, while women have been considered as private and associated primarily with reproductive functions. This constricts the exposure and interaction of women within the household, leading to their dependency on the male member for external activities. This is particularly applicable in patriarchal society. In few societies, women's education is considered unnecessary considering the fact that their interaction with the external society is minimal. Even their presence in the public space is looked down upon. This increased dependency on their male counterparts for the simplest part of activities. With the emergence of market-oriented economy, Women's role in the household left them further dependent on the male member of the household. For instance, in the agricultural household, men are often involved in selling the outputs. Women though involved in many intermediate activities like planting of saplings, post-harvest tasks like harvesting, cleaning, storing, etc. These are not separately accounted for and the net cash received flowed through men in the family. It has relegated women to a status of inferiority and continued dependency while their male counterparts enjoy a position of authority. Discrimination against women happen because of a series of complex interconnected factors like the gender blind structure of the labor market, agricultural innovation which missed to recognize women labors, land and asset ownership policy etc. These factors affect the financial independence and access to productive resources which, ult which ultimately reduce the decision making capability of women within and outside the household. Gender equality applies to both gender having the liberty to develop their own abilities, make their own choices, identify their own responsibilities and have equal opportunities not limited by gender stereotypes gender role of prejudices. Their right, responsibilities and opportunities should not get determined by their sex. Gender inequality predominantly impacts negatively on women and the third gender. Gender and disasters. Studies have shown that how gender, race, ethnicity and poverty reduce resilience and exacerbate vulnerabilities. High vulnerability of individuals, household or society often translate into compromised resilience or to disaster. High vulnerability of individuals, household or society often translate into compromised resilience to disasters. 
Agencies operating in disaster scenarios identify women as a vulnerable group. Adolescents, pregnant women, lactating mothers, the disabled and the aged make up particularly vulnerable group in emergencies. Additionally, studies find women to be disproportionately affected by disaster. The root cause of women's vulnerability to the adverse impact of disasters are lack of access to the resources such as income, education, health and social network which is governed by the intra-household dynamics. Women limited control of resources which is a cultural aspect. Thus, women are more vulnerable to disaster due to societal and intra-household gender discrimination, inequality and inhibiting gender roles. Gender issues in disaster. The combined effect of gender differences and inequality imply that men, women, boys and girls face different form and level of exposure and vulnerability to natural hazards. The effect and impact of disaster and the individual and institutional response mechanism adopted by different genders are also different. Thus, the gender differences in disaster arise as an outcome of biological and socio-cultural factor which endanger roles and behaviors of an individual within a community. The key gender issues that are observed in context of disasters are nutritional, reproductive and sexual health concern. Women go through multiple life phases like pregnancy and lactation periods. These phases create differential needs in women. Primarily from, nutrition, primarily from nutritional and health care perspective. In the aftermath of disaster and during the disaster event, addressing these requirements become a key concern. Life cycle differentiated food product and non-food items are often not available post disasters. This becomes a serious concern for women residing in relief camps for longer duration or women residing in areas affected chronically by floods. In time of disaster, absence of sufficient food would result in women and girl being in primary victim. In time of disaster, absence of sufficient food would result in women and girl being the primary victims. The shortage or absence of food item result in the reduction in the food share of women or girls, whereas larger share of food are enjoyed by men and boys that ultimately result in the increased incidences of malnutrition among women. In many cultural regimes, traditional practices and customs are observed at the time of childbirth to ensure the health and well-being of both mother and the child. The environment of the temporary shelter does not allow such practices to be held. On the contrary, hygiene becomes a severe concern in the camps. In most cases, pregnant women lack access to suitable obstetric care and have suffered miscarriage and delivery in unhygienic or unsafe conditions. Social stigma related to maceration and sexual health is another major concern. The need for faster mobilization of resources often obscure the need which are equally important but less visible. Without careful planning and sound understanding of the local context, often the relief provided is not appropriate and equitable. Women and minority groups often have lower representation in social, economic and political power spheres. But in post-disaster scenarios, these are often the sector which are the key point of contacts and decision making for relief personnel. This led to missing need of vulnerable groups. In the relief product, material like sanitary napkin, women's undergarment and condoms are rarely provided, which subject women to compromise their sexual health. These concerns continue even after the emergency phase is over. These concerns continue even after the emergency phase is over. In the aftermath of the Indian Ocean tsunami, it was observed that women underwent operation to reverse tubal ligation with recanalization surgery to enable them to have children again. This was a result of the massive life loss in the disaster. The increasing trend of underage marriages among girls are also observed in several disasters especially where female mortality is higher than male, male mortality in disasters, inaccessible or poorly designed relief shelters. 
Orphan relief shelters are located in the location inaccessible to women due to physical vulnerability. In such situation, women depend on their male counterpart to access relief support during distress conditions. Pregnant women, elderly, differently abled, and women-headed households without adult male members face a specific difficulty in such situations. The only available food is the stored food items, food provided by neighbors or relatives, or food provided in door-to-door -door distribution. Shelter Issues the female member of the community may be reluctant to seek shelter in temporary campus because of shared communal facility which do not have separate private spaces for women. Often the partition between the living spaces of different people is flimsy, which hinder the privacy of women. This is particularly applicable for pregnant lactating mother and menstruating women. Access to clean and safe washroom is another key concern for women. In the absence of clean washroom, women are often exposed to different diseases or are forced to defecate in the open, compromising the cleanliness of the place. This is also dissuades many to take shelter in relief camps. Mortality rates. Mortality rates show a gendered pattern across different hazards, while it is observed that in the Indian Ocean tsunami or the Latour earthquake, a high percentage of women died. In certain other hazards like Cyclone Mitch or Thunderstorm Death, high percentage of male death was reported. This can be largely attributed to the gender differentiated role of the two sexes. In Indian Ocean Tsunami, the physical inability to climb trees or swim became the constraint. Attire of women was also blamed for the inability to swim. In the Latour earthquake, the women communities were indoor while the earthquake occurred which led to large number of female deaths. The same is applicable for Gujarat earthquake 2001, where women involved in household activity indoors got affected by the building collapses. On the contrary, a high death percentage of men were observed in Cyclone Mitch in 1988. This was attributed to the societal concept of masculinity and the gendered role of men as a protector of the family which often compelled them to take up risk to protect the family, community or property. Even in thunderstorm or industrial accidents in India, the death percentage of men is much more than that of women. This is because men are traditionally involved in outdoor activity which expose them to such risk. Limitation and Restriction on Mobility Cultural constraints on female mobility often hinder self-rescue. There are regions where women need to be accompanied by men when they are leaving home. In such cases, women may hesitate to leave house without the permission of male even after receiving hazard information or early warning. The western idea of gender relation and position of women in the society does not hold in Southeast Asia due to differences in ethnicity and cultural peculiarity. These create multiple hindrances while the Western approach is taken up in disaster management. Inherent Vulnerability Poverty is considered as the primary factor influencing vulnerability. It has been observed that poverty has a gendered dimension and around 60% of the poor people consist of women. Additionally, women are often considered as helpless victims in disaster due to their dependent status. Lower literacy rate, lower level of schooling or training, lower decision making, capability and lack of resource control become a key concern post disaster. In many instances, women and girls face difficulty in access to recovery and relief assistance as they are not the household head. This is applicable to livelihood provision also. This again causes further disempowerment of women leading to cyclical impacts. Increased abuse and violence, child abuse and neglect. Increased abuse and violence, child abuse and neglect, intimate partner violence, sexual molestation, forced marriage, child marriage, and sexual exploitation and trafficking see a hike after disaster. Due to the high concentration of people in a limited space, security get compromised and women are largely exposed to demand for sexual favors rape and other form of sexual and physical abuse in camps and other temporary shelter arrangements, the path to toilet, dark spaces, etc. are particularly vulnerable in this context. 
tent made of thin material are often cut using knife or sharp weapons to get access in camp housing single women. After El Salvador earthquake in 2001, single women requested sheeting for temporary shelter which is opaque and strong. In the translucent sheet, shelters were easy to notice when the women are alone and it can be easily cut with mashup. Many women were raped in such shelters. Domestic violence also witnessed sharp rise post-disaster. After Cyclone Isla, in many households, heightened tension and increased incidence of domestic violence were observed. These led to high concern of security and safety of women post-disaster. Unfamiliar gender role after a disaster, women often become the household head in the case of infirmity or death of the male member. Unfamiliar to the public space, women often face multiple difficulty in performing the financial support function and outdoor activities. At the same time, when traditional support networks are damaged, workload may increase in terms of taking care of children, the infirm, the elderly and people with functional limitations or disabilities. Men, on the contrary, often find themselves engaged in tasks done predominantly by women in case of death or disability of female counterparts. Childcare and household labor are largely unfamiliar territories for men and often they struggle to manage these along with performing economically productive functions. Women's participation in disaster management as a sector is treated largely as a male domain. This often leaves the gender concern unheard with the little focus on the female constraint and concern. The lower women participation in the disaster management processes can be attributed to the societal constraints. The lack of participation also results in their reduced access to warning information, poor ability to respond and lead to the development of imperfect coping strategies. Additionally, the knowledge and capacity of women remain largely underutilized in disaster management phase due to their non-participation. Poor disaster research, gender concern in disaster is under research which results in their slower adoption in policies and guidelines. This is particularly evident for the concern of the third gender. Thus, it is extremely necessary to address these impacts to develop societal resilience to hazards. Implementing gender-sensitive approach will minimize gender-differentiated impact of disasters, build a resilient society, and lead to the proper utilization of the post-disaster window of opportunity. Let us discuss a case study of Indian tsunami. A study by Oxfam suggested that after the Indian Ocean tsunami in Banda Ake, Indonesia, as many as four women died compared to one man. This discrepancy can be largely attributed to the fact that women are largely unaware of swimming or climbing trees. Some other studies stated that women stayed back to look after their household, children and elderly which resulted in their higher death toll. After the tsunami, the trend to marry of women early to have children was observed to compensate for the life loss. This resulted in having children closer together which had implication on the education, nutritional security and health of the children. In many cases, the relief and livelihood provision were provided only to the male member of the family as they were the household head which created dependency. Thus, the pre-existing gender issue were escalated by the tsunami and the gender differentiated effects of disaster management processes got highlighted. Third gender and their challenges. The severely neglected aspect of the disaster management is the integration of the third gender in the different phase of disaster management. Discriminated and excluded in the normal social interaction, the third gender face severe difficulties in the aftermath of disasters. Being less studied and understood in disaster research, their needs are often recognized. IFRC has recorded their observation that often their death and losses remain unrecorded in disaster statistics. Their differentiated needs are not acknowledged and they are stigmatized in ways which result in minimizing their access to normal channel of information, warning or communication. In many cases, they are dishonored and their presence is not accepted in the different phases of disaster response, recovery and mitigation. 
though there is a limited literature on need and challenges faced by the third gender, one illustrative example is provided here. In the aftermath of the Indian Ocean tsunami, many belonging to the third gender did not find place in the temporary shelter. They were not registered as beneficiaries for relief as they faced a stigma which dissuaded them from enlisting in the beneficiary roles. This forced them to experience acute hunger, homelessness and sexual violence. Many had to sleep in open areas and were gang raped several times. Their livelihood need stayed largely unrecognized in the response and rehabilitation process due to lack of supporting documents and loss of livelihood assets available with them. One study indicates that common shelter for transgender communities would have provided a sense of security and help in the prevention of some of the trauma that the third gender face. Similar issues were noted in Kosi Flood 2008, where the third gender community incurred severe losses like other gender communities, but institutional assistance was not provided. Guideline and standard to address gender concern in disaster management. There are many approaches and guidelines developed to address gender concern in disaster. In this module, we have elaborated the IFRC guideline on gender sensitive approaches for disaster management. Disaster response, emergency need assessment, data on age, gender and diversity of affected people to be collected during emergency need assessment. Separate in Separate interviews to be conducted with section of affected men and women to identify and understand the relief need before planning for relief assistant. Gender and diversity balance in the need assessment and intervention by the response team should be ensured as in some gender specific cultures, women can only talk to women. Possible need to protect vulnerable men and women including those from ethnic minorities who are older or disabled need to be identified. The safety of these group need to be rigorously monitored, reported on and advocated. Beneficiary registration and relief distribution system. It need to be made certain that procedure of relief registration and distribution do not accidentally exclude women or vulnerable and ma marginalized group or individual, for example, household headed by women the disabled or transgenders. Beneficiary do not be registered solely based on male head of household. Both men and women need to be consulted with and sought their feedback in order to ensure the contents of relief packages actually meet their respective needs and are socially and culturally appropriate. Preferably, this should be done as a part of disaster preparedness planning and pre-stocking of relief items. Emergency response team, both male and female health personnel need to be provided especially when cultural norms may not allow the examination of women by male physician and when women mobility may be restricted. Appropriateness of relief item, gender and cultural specific need of community is to be taken into consideration. Item like condoms and, item like condoms and midwifery kits and information that meet both men's and women's reproductive health need should to be included in relief assistant including protection against HIV, AIDS and other sexually transmitted diseases. Pregnant and lactating women have a special need for ensuring adequate milk production and for other crucial nutrients and vitamin supplement that can be incorporated into family or mother and baby assistant packages. Counseling on domestic violence and alcohol abuse prevention need to be included when providing psychosocial support. This support should be sensitive to the need of some men for help coping with changes in their gender role, caring for young children after loss of a spouse, provision of safe shelter and wash requirement, emergency and transitional shelters and support services should be designed that are responsive Emergency and transitional shelters and support services should be designed that are responsive to the socio-cultural and economic need and preferences identified by both affected men and women and keep in mind privacy and safety consideration. Secure door and adequate lightning can be important factor in safety.
cooking, bathing and toilet arrangement also need to be adequate, safe and culturally appropriate. This required participation by both male and female beneficiaries in designing such facilities. If it is not possible to provide individual household sanitation facility, then bathing area and toilet are best segregated by sex. Female and male bathing area should be placed at some distance from each other and near areas with adequate lighting. Whenever culturally necessary, women's bathing and toilet area should also include a separate area for washing and drying menstruating clothes. Kitchen should be adapted to local food preparation customs. Disaster recovery or recovery assessment. A full gender analysis needs to be conducted as an essential component of recovery need assessment. The team conducting the need assessment needs to be gender and diversity balanced. Housing and wash. Women and men from all the social and economic groupings should be fully involved and consulted within the affected communities when making decision about the repair, design and location of new housing and community infrastructure such as water and sanitation facilities and community halls. Local participation need to be encouraged in physical reconstruction including the hiring of women and providing them with training in construction related skills. Strengthening livelihoods. Livelihood need of both men and women need to be recognized and considered in rehabilitation and recovery phases, especially those women who have lost their husband and are now heading the family. Health concerns. Both male and female health personnel need to be used to meet ongoing health and rehabilitation needs, especially when cultural norms may not allow women to be examined by male physician and when women mobility may be restricted. Accurate information on different roles women and men play in contributing to the household food security or income whether as family member or heads of the family need to be obtained and livelihood recovery activity that meet the needs of both should be designed. Housing, cash or food based assistance like house reconstruction, cash or food for work, cash grant should be designed that provide opportunities for both vulnerable men and women and ensure that those without land title such as squatters, unregistered migrants and female head of household are not missed. All persons must be paid fairly and equally for performing the work. Disaster preparedness and mitigation. Practical strategies can include spreading awareness of a culture of safety and promoting attitudes that favor such a culture as well as advocating for laws, government policies and incentives for risk reduction measures. Mitigation activities. A systematic gender analysis need to be carried out of the different roles, responsibilities and socio-economic status of men, women and other household members in need assessments. A focus on diversity issue must be included in the analysis such as the situation of men and women who are poorer, ethnic minority, elderly, disabled etc. Men and women from diverse group need to be actively involved in the planning, design, construction and maintenance of mitigation work. Both male and female capacity in activities such as risk mapping must be strengthened to enable gender perspective of risk and vulnerability to be identified through processes such as VCA. Early warning system. Involvement and engagement of both genders should be promoted in community-based early warning system to ensure procedures are sensitive to both female and male needs, including privacy, security, and adequate protection of valuable assets like livestock in communal centers. Knowledge and information transfer and communication system. Existing local organization should be collaborated with and strengthen that represent women and diverse group in order to encourage community participation either in the promotion, planning or implementation of the program. Full participation of local female and male volunteers should be ensured in identifying at-risk areas, 
group and individual and in developing communities based early warning system that use the local tool and knowledge of both men and women. Advocacy Proportional representation of women and men from adverse groups should be promoted in the decision making process of community based disaster risk reduction and preparedness activities to ensure that the social, cultural and economic gender aspect of risk reduction are being addressed. Local government official and community leaders should be educated and advocated with the fully involved women and men as well as marginalized group in disaster management activities and decision making. Here we will discuss a case study after the 2005 Pakistan earthquake. Over 8000 community and lady health worker were mobilized under the lady health worker program. Local women were recruited and mobilized along with mobile health team to serve remote areas. They deliver health care for monitor ailment and conductor. They deliver health care for minor ailment and conducted immunization camps. Special attention was provided to maintain the reproductive health services in their communities. As a result of this effort, the mortality and morbidity rate after the disaster were significantly lower than what was expected. Challenges to mainstream gender sensitivity in disaster management Poor understanding of gender disaster risk reduction linkages at conceptual and practice levels, especially at national level that lays down guidelines and policies. Lack of genuine political accountability and financial resources of global advocacy and action on gender and disaster risk reduction. Lack of institutional and individual capacity and tools to mainstream gender and disaster risk reduction. Gender role define the behavior, task and responsibility that a society consider appropriate for each gender. The combined effect of the gender differences and inequality implied that men, women, boy and girl face different form and level of exposure and vulnerability to natural hazard. The key gender issue that are observed in the context of disaster are nutritional, reproductive and sexual health concern. Inaccessible relief shelter or poorly designed issue with shelter, differential mortality rate between gender, limitation and restrictions on mobility, increased abuse and violence, unfamiliar gender roles, poor disaster research and participation of women in disaster management, lack of recognition of third gender. These are guidelines developed to address gender concern in disaster which must be utilized in disaster management. Thank you.